Welcome to the 650th episode of Cross Border Interviews. We sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of this great country. Now, over the course of this episode, as always, we will be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they are working to make their community a better place for everyone. And when we were deciding who our 650th guest would be, we couldn't have asked for a more appropriate guest. Uh, she is fun, she is lively, and she is such an energy to be around. So today, we are honored to be sitting down with Regional Municipality of Wood Buffalo, Alberta, Councillor Funky Benjoko. But before we get into this episode, I want to ask a favor. Please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this episode or follow button. That shows up me and shows our listeners that municipal issues do matter. In today's hyper-partisan era, we want to remember that municipalities are the government of proximity. They are the ones that make the most impact on your day-to-day -day lives. And you watching, listening to these episodes makes me feel good that municipalities issues are important to not just me, but to you. Now, on to our interview. Funky, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start with the gen general question, but it's an important question. And that is, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Uh, well, uh, I'll just say a little bit about my background. So my parents were both in community service. Um, my father was actually um, a chairman of the local government, which will be maybe a mayor in Canada. And my mother was a counselor. She was also a teacher for like 30 something years. Um, father was a customary court um, judge. So they were all doing um, services to the community. So it was just uh, something that I would naturally do. But having said that, when I got to Canada, I, okay, I was born in Nigeria. I lived in the States for a little bit. But the Canadian culture of uh, volunteering, um, I think, uh, stands out. Um, so we, uh, first of all, in, uh, in Toronto, my first job, I volunteered and after about, I believe two months, I got the first job. And wow. on and on and just uh, uh, keep serving. And then also in Fort McMurray, uh, I got on um, um, the RMWB Community Services, <clears throat> RMWB Community Services Committee, and I served for six years, and which is the maximum. So at that point, people were thinking I was planning to run for, for an election, but I didn't really, uh, that wasn't my thinking. I just wanted to give back and give back. And this community has given me so much, this uh, region, coming here to work in the oil science and the lots of opportunities for myself and for my children. So I wanted to get back. And so, and then uh, gradually, I actually now then started noticing um, a gap um, that there's no one like me. Um, my color and even women representation is still very low, not only in our region, but province wide and maybe even nationally and globally. Um, so, uh, so I finally saw the need for me to step up. And uh, first of all, most, some of the things that I would like to see, I believe my voice will be heard if I'm on the table where decisions are being made and then uh, give back at a higher level. So that's how I gradually uh, decided it, it was time for me to step up and uh, serve as a counselor. So just want to make sure that I got this correct, but you, you said that your father and your mother both served at uh, local uh, uh, levels, both in Nigeria, yeah. I am assuming. Um, yes. I, I've got to ask the, the stupid question, but it's an important one. I never wanted to do anything my father or mother wanted me <laughs> to do, but you decided you were going to go the same footsteps as your mother and father and become a local no. counselor. Did you want to be a, a politician growing up? No, I, I didn't <laughs> want to be a politician even a year before I ran. Really? So, no. 
I and my father didn't. Um, I, I, it's a, a bit um, funny that it's coming from somebody who was born in Nigeria, but most uh, people avoid the Nigerian politics. So before my father uh, passed on, he didn't want any of us to go into politics, even though one of my brothers ended up going in that line. But it wasn't my intention. I've um, worked in supply chain management since I graduated from university in 1989. Never had any plan to, to run for office, no. Uh, so like you, I didn't want to do that, but um, everybody saw me in that position before I saw myself. Because I, when people would ask me, I thought it was a general joke, and then I would laugh about it and then move on. Um, but uh, <laughs> I never knew I could do it, uh, or it's something. Uh, but somehow God prepares you for a role or a position that He wants you to to play in in the community, so or in life generally. So I think I've always been a people's person. I uh, love people, love to serve, and um, I'm also a bit. Uh, uh, ready to speak my my mind in any gathering. So I think uh... <laughs> that's what I like to hear from a guest of the show. So I yes. want to talk about the last two years because we have just passed the two year mark when you were officially elected as a councillor yes. for Ward One in the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo. Yeah. How how has the last two years been from for you? Uh, being an outsider looking in on what's going on at the local level for almost I'd say eight years because you moved to uh, Wood Buffalo in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. You get elected in 2011. 2011, so 10 years yes. before you put your name forward. And yes. you've now been instrumental in making decisions around the council table. So for you, how has the last two years been as a councillor for the regional? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> one, I like to say that Yesterday was actually the day that we were elected two years ago. Um, it feels amazing to be able to represent because I believe representation is important. And on that ground alone, it feels so amazing to represent minority, to represent women and uh, people who look or, or, or have similar background uh, as I am. Um, so that makes it uh, feel so good. Um, but on a duty level, it's been an amazing journey to work for the people, to see that I can make contributions. It's humbling. It's a honor at the same time. Um, I, I did see myself here uh, a few years ago. And as an immigrant, I don't think it's something that one will come in and start thinking I could get to this point, especially uh, finding out that there was no uh, person of color, whether man or woman, before uh, before me. So even to run, it was um, it takes a lot of um, audacity, uh, a lot of uh, boldness to say, yes, I'll try. And uh, so on so many levels, it's been so fulfilling. And the acceptance that I have gotten from people of the region, be it indigenous people, uh, black, white, whatever, it's been amazing. I, I feel loved. And I also think I have um, poured myself uh, out to serve. I have no closing time. <laughs> I sleep, wake up, and I'm ready to go. And I've been so blessed with a lot of energy and good health. Um, so I, I, my focus for the past two years has been the people, people, people. So that has informed the emotions uh, that I brought forward and my um, visibility within the community. I believe a leader should not only be heard, but also to be seen and to support in whichever way. Um, so that's, that's how it's been for me every day has been um, amazing. Of course, there are some times that <laughs> you see get some uh, um, few people that might not necessarily uh, love me as much, uh, but if I would go by the majority, I have no complaints and uh, it's been amazing. 
it's been, and, and I think that's one of the that's what of what one of what makes uh, Canada a great, if not the greatest country, by my definition, the, the greatest country to live, uh, especially for an immigrant. I, I want to ask a very personal question here, and I apologize if it comes off insincere, but I, 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 you've talked about representation a few times since we've started this conversation, and you, you said you didn't see anyone like yourself on council prior to being elected. You are the first person of color, as you've just said, who's been elected to the regional uh, Wood, uh, municipality of Wood Buffalo's council. Yes. Does that come with a weight? Does that come with a responsibility that you are the first of uh, Im- immigrant background who is color, who is serving on that council? So if you don't get it right, if you don't do it properly, uh, the steps that people follow in your footsteps may be harder for them to track. Does that weigh on you when you make decisions around the council table? You actually got it right. And uh, I... I said something yesterday, I uh, was having discussion with my uh, daughter and I said, I did that not for me, but for you and our grandchildren and many more who are still on the way uh, to Canada. So it's not about me. Uh, when um, I found myself, especially for black folks, people of African descent, um, be it uh, Caribbean or African, um, it comes with a lot of weight and responsibility, um, and I can't afford to mess up. So I wake up each day, I pray, I'm a Christian, and I just try to to do my best. Learning, doing, um, collab- collaborating with other people, doing everything I can to ensure that I deliver. Um, is it hard? It, it comes with a lot of weight, and uh, but uh, so far so good. Uh, when I look back, I think uh, I think um, I have done the the people that I represent. I have done them uh, proud, uh, starting with my family and uh, and uh, to the people of African descent. So um, that's always on my mind. It's not so. There are things I I can't do anymore, and that's how it is. I appreciate your candor there, and I want to turn to the role of a counselor for a few minutes, if that's okay, before we turn to the issues. And I want to know: two years in this job, you've had to make some tough choices. I'm assuming the 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 entire country is going through an affordability crisis. The entire country is going through a lot of mental health issues with uh, the uh, the passing of COVID nineteen. Uh, Fort McMurray w- Regional uh, Municipality of Wood Buffalo is quite known for its oil and gas sector, and that's been sort of strained over the last few years. The decisions you make around the council table, though impact your residents the day after you make them. The decisions you make impact the people, your neighbors, your loved ones, your family members, your coworkers, so on and so forth. How do you do that in a community like the region? How do you balance the understanding that you need to make sure the community survives, but not do it on the backs of the people? Um, So uh, my background is supply chain. So I think dollars, I think savings, cost savings, I think processes, what can we eliminate and uh, or what can we do to get um, efficiencies and effectiveness. Um, so that has helped me, one. And I know, just like you said, that the role of a leader is not going to be an easy one. There has to be times when we take a decision and 40% or 30% or even 5% would not be happy with that. What has informed my position is also the, the um, I look at the impact. Is this going to affect 90% one? And then I look at the result of the pain, the sharp pain. Say, for instance, we are increasing um, the rate for uh, water to the rural or to to the city. Um, How many people would this impact? 
and uh, also in the in the long run, is it going to result in something much more positive? Uh, things like that. So people has always been the focus, and there's no way we can. And I also know that there's no way we will get it right 100% of the time. There has been times <laughs> that we have done the meeting and I can't speak for I was thinking, did I actually, did we get it right? Did I stay on the right side or right uh, side and things like that? Um, so, that, but that's the work of a leader. So um, it's been a journey that has its own challenges and people part of it. There has been times when people will come to cancel, which that bylaw we're, we're changing that process now. But we'll say for instance, someone uh, in social service sector that needs money, they need some funding. And this, um, that, that part of, of the process might not necessarily fall on that municipality uh, responsibility and budget, but they don't know. They need uh, 50,000, for instance, to, to run um, a, a program that would uh, benefit youths and things like that. But we have to take a stand and say, no, this bill should go to the province. But there has been times when you look at people, you see them, you see the need, you see how emotional this is gonna be for parents. And those are difficult times. How do you balance the realities of what you're what your job and responsibilities are at the municipal levels with the expectations of the citizens who don't really care about the jurisdictional rules and areas that municipalities, provincial or federal governments are under because you're the closest they want you to deal with. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'll start by saying the fact that that's not our jurisdiction, doesn't excuse our helping. Yeah. So our job is so difficult or is so holistic. We still have to try and link them up with the help that they need, where they can get help, right? So we, we are not just, uh, I, I, uh, mine is, I don't hands off, like, oh no, that's not my area. So you can get a move on. So we try, I try my best to link them up with the appropriate uh, party or link where they can apply and things like that. Um, unfortunately, there has been times where, where even as a municipality, we have to cover the cost, maybe temporarily with the hope that we get the money back, where this service is essential to the residents, where it, it's a matter of uh, impacting children or women or men, I mean, where it's going to be having a negative impact that, we, that will be much more costly than the cost. So there are some things that we have to do to help programs continue while they, they apply for the funding or while we, 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 we get um, reimbursed back from, from the province most of the time. Um, though we haven't always been getting everything that we want in this region uh, because of the perception that uh, we are the oil region and uh, we, we, we're self-sufficient. Self, self we don't always have the money, uh, but so we, we actually try to ensure that uh, processes continue, yeah. uh, children are fed or, or things that we need to do uh, as a body. I have one last question in this segment before we turn to the region as a whole. And I want to ask about the personal private life of a counselor. You go to the grocery store, you go to shoppers, drug mart, you are counselor. Yes. You go yes. to the post office. You're the counselor. You step yes. outside. You're the counselor. There yeah. is no downtime for you when you're out in the public. No. <laughs> How do you balance that in a community like the region? Because I can imagine there are days and it seems like you're very active and it seems like you want the best and you want to engage with people. But I can yeah. imagine there's days you just want to run into the grocery store, grab a carton of milk and come <laughs> home and finish off that cup of coffee. But you know, that conversation, that uh, trip might take two hours if you get stopped mm -hmm. and talk to people. So how do you balance the life of a, uh, a community local elected leader with just being funky and just being a, a relaxed yes. private citizen? 
Yeah, so uh, I've had people come to me and tell me straight on, you need to make time for yourself. You need to have times that it's you and your family and all that. And uh, my, my family, my immediate family also ensure that, you know, there are times we have to, I have to be able to wear my leggings and t-shirt and go, <laughs> go bowling or go, go do other things. But indeed, there's no, no, no break. It doesn't mean I won't run into someone uh, at the bowling alley that will say, well, I've been trying to get a hold of you. I don't have your number. Thank God you are here. Um, so, but what I do is I try to also prepare myself for that. Um, it is what it is. If somebody needs help and they couldn't get a hold of you and now you are right here, at least I'll exchange information and continue and let them know maybe I'm um, on, the, uh, on the go. I'm, uh, I'm on the clock right now, but please feel free to reach out to me. So I connect with people as much as possible. And then I also uh, ensure that I have the times that are funky times that I have to do me <laughs> and just uh, take a break from it all. I try to do that. I try to do that. Times for my hair, times for my nail. And guess what? I have some people <laughs> that will tell me, no, it's time to do this or it's time to let's go out and uh, do other things. Uh, so I have some friends like that too. Um, so I still make sure that I, I, I leave some time for, for myself, for me time and for friends time, family time. I, I try, I try. Well, I'm glad that there's a balance there because I, yes. I can imagine the job gets overwhelming because you're on 24 seven and the issues that you deal with are pretty challenging right now. And I want to talk about the issues. And before I ask this question, I'm going to preface it by saying this is a conversation between the counselor and myself. This is not a motion of counsel. This is not a direction of counsel. This is not a policy of counsel. This is the counselor's opinion and in okay. her own opinion. So, yes. counselor, in your yes. own opinion, as of recording this episode right here, right now, what yes. do you believe is the biggest issue or issues facing the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo today? Well, uh, I'm glad you put the disclosure out first. <laughs> because We get uh, lots of opinion... emails about it, Funky. <laughs> <laughs> because my opinion might differ from, uh, from all, all the other uh, uh, nine councillors and, of course, the mayor. Um, for me, I think stability. When I ran uh, for council, my slogan was to not only attract but retain retention of people uh, in the region. Um, this city or this area seems to be very uh, transient, like people come and leave. And, and uh, when I look at what the issues, okay, infrastructures, for instance, um, people still have challenges um, assessing all the medical needs that they need. Um, uh, mental health issues, and you have to go to admitting for help and things like that. Um, that is challenging when a woman might, if they have complications, they have to travel for scanning and things like that. Though those are being addressed, but that's one of the issues that make people say, okay, I'm, I'm out of here. Um, so we need to fix that. But one big elephant in the room is the uh, oil sands. Um, the strategies uh, sometimes might not be necessarily 100% aligned with our strategy um, or my strategy now. So I can't speak for the entire region or mayor is our spokesperson. Um, so we still have issues with a lot of people on camp and also oil being our main um, economy. Sometimes there's a downturn and then sometimes there's a boom. So it's a little bit challenging to have um, a steady economy uh, because oil 
drives most of what we do here. And uh, when it's good, we are very good. When it's not so good, same thing. We 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 tend to to go with the flow of of the oil. So those are the I think that those are the two main things that are, are economy, uh, the stability, and maybe if we can diversify. And the way we can diversify, in my opinion, is to build our population, ensure we retain people, their hospital, hospitality will grow, commerce will grow, retail will grow, and uh, there'll be other things, but if it all it revolves around uh, oil, uh, it's still going to be challenging, just my opinion. So we need yep. to make Fort McMurray more livable for the people who live it, have all, most of what they need, uh, more maybe more stores, people should be able to shop locally, uh, especially medical needs to be met within uh, reach, not having to travel and things like that. I think those are the challenges that we face and we are, I think we are all aware of those, um, those and we, 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 we tend to focus on them to see how we can manage them. Our roads, we need to link up with other um, neighboring regions and bigger cities, uh, make it easier for people to travel back and forth for um, commerce for people to be able to truck in um, merchandise and things like that. So we, we still have uh, some things that we can improve on. So I want to know from your perspective, and I want to start <laughs> stick with the retention part of this issue first, because you said that was that was that was the first thing you talked about. So I want to talk about that for a few seconds, if that's possible. How do you see your role as counselor in addressing that issue? Because you're right, people, Fort McMurray is quite known for being a transient community. People fly in, fly out for the oil and gas sector, and yes. pretty much that's what they do. There is a large population that lives up there as well, but the majority of it, and I, I, I could be wrong here, and correct me if I'm wrong, there is a transient community that comes in, flies back out, comes in, flies out. How do you see yourself in that role in trying to address some of that retention aspect of that job? Because you're not alone in trying to retain people staying in their communities. So what do you need to do? What does the region need to do? And what does council, uh, you see yourself on council doing to address that concern right now, right here? I think we just have to be intentional. We, we know what the issues are. So we need to look at how to fix it. Entertainment, for instance, for a 50 year old woman, might not be the most important thing. <laughs> but we have young population here, <clears throat> young couples and um, new graduates, and it now of late, uh, a lot of students. So we need to strategize and ensure that they have uh, entertainment, for instance, as simple as entertainment is to an older person, uh, <laughs> like me. <laughs> Um, stores, people should be able to. So we just need to go work hand. Uh, we, uh, we have the economic development, uh, Fort McMurray economic development, and they are doing uh, their due diligence. So we just need to continue to work with them. And we're already doing that. Collaborate with them, support them to deliver uh, those facilities um, or those infrastructures that we need in this region. I think just like I said, to make it more livable for both young um, and old, because even the older community, the older population, we need to support them more. We're building, uh, we have uh, some seniors homes, but one of the feedback I got in the community when I ran, uh, as you know, for M I, MLA for the province was that they need uh, for more support for the older uh, population. Um, and uh, some of the young working class people are moving or could move away because of the need to support their older family members. 
grandmothers, grandfathers. So those, we need to be intentional and just zero in on the needs of the people and continue to work to provide uh, for, for, for stability, for ease of movement, transportation, for ease of shopping, and to connect uh, Fort McMurray with neighboring communities, which uh, we, we had some announcements earlier on in the year. Uh, Daniel Smith was here. We are hoping 628 uh, would open up. And so just to make uh, more commerce, more entertainment, medical needs, and, uh, and then we, we should be able to, because the, opportun the kind of opportunities that we have here for graduates, for young people, it's amazing. It's just to have uh, those uh, infrastructures and um, other needs of the people to support uh, the decision for people to want to live here. Do you, do you do you see yourself to have done doing a, a good job in the last two years to try to start sort of laying the groundwork for this this conversations that need to happen this work that needs to happen oh. because, uh, because you you're you you're, you have you have a vote at council you can make your yes. voice heard and yes. it's a powerful voice because you're uh, one of eleven people who are elected to represent the community so do you yes. believe that you've done a good enough job to sort of start that groundwork to address these issues that you've talked about. Yeah, I think the beauty of this council is that we all seem to work together very well. And our objectives, um, what we want to achieve are very similar. So we are each one bringing their own skills and bringing their own interest uh, or, or the areas of strength rather. Together, I think we've done a great job uh, moving in that direction. So awesome. There's much work to be done, but like you said, we are moving in that direction, uh, in my mind. You know and I know that municipalities do not have an unlimited supply of money. Yes. They just don't. <laughs> I don't care don't. how many people think they do, <laughs> they don't. We do. But you hear people's concerns and issues every single day. You talked about the retention. You talked about the diversification. But if yes. you go talk to 100 people in your community, they may talk about the small micro issues, that playground that needs upgraded, that pothole oh, that's yeah. in front of their house. Mm -hmm. But you know you can't fix everything for everyone. And you yes. sometimes may have to say no or not this or year. Later. Exactly. How yes. hard is that as a counselor to say no to people, to sort of burst their bubble and not let them get what they want this year? And maybe it might not happen for two, three years. So... One of the things that I do is to get the facts and present them as they are. Because I don't have the money personally, <laughs> but I don't let it stop me from asking, from putting the, the request forward. Uh, if there's a poor lightning in the field, as little as that is, I'm sending the message that I need to send saying, can somebody check it? And it's the same thing for, for all of cancer. Sometimes you run into a big pothole or whatever. We report or we try to see what can be fixed. We can't fix everything, but we have to keep trying. And when the answer is no, well, uh, if we get a no answer, I would let the resident also know. If we get a wait, it's going to be 2024. We we'll let them know, and uh, if we if we get maybe um, we watch and see, we we'll just I just make sure that I tell them what the information that I have, and 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 live with that. Is of it course, hard? But everybody's not going to be happy. <laughs> there is no. Uh, you, whoa, 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 whoa! You're telling me that a politician can't make everyone happy, <laughs> Funky? Come no. on, that's no, that's a lie. Politicians <laughs> just love making people happy. Uh, we, you, but it's the reality is that it's it's, it's not possible. Uh, for instance, during uh, winter time, I could get six different emails. Oh, nobody's cleaning my street. Whereas the street across the road is being cleaned and. So everybody uh, is not being treated fairly when it comes to snow time. Uh, well, we'll try. 
And if it's not their time or the week or the day to be clean, well, we let them know it's not going to, they are not going to be very happy, but that's the truth. But also if there is an immediate need, my job is to ensure that I advocate for that uh, resident or that street as well. Uh, I mean, that is a difficult work because sometimes you are pushing um, both directions, but that's our role. When we can't even, uh, for instance, even if it's a provincial issue, well, my job is to advocate and not to say, okay, well, that's it, it's not, uh, that's not my area, and the higher by, no. Um, our job is to stay ensure that we, we speak up and we advocate for, for the residents. I want to turn to my last subject now because I am cautious of time and we've been chatting for almost 40 minutes and I want to talk about a subject that's near and dear to my heart and that okay. is tourism. I love tourism. I think it's an important factor that municipalities need to address. I think yes. municipalities don't do a good enough job talking about the hidden gems in their community. So as someone who is going to be coming up to the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo and calling you up and going out for a coffee while I'm there, what else should I be doing in the region to sort of see the hidden gems and what are the hidden gems of your community? Oh, wow. Um, we have a very lovely, but maybe not as advertised or as known to the community, uh, to, to the other parts of, of, of the country or to the other parts of the province, rather. Known to the community, but maybe not to uh, provinces and other people around us. My first time to, uh, that I traveled to Fort Chippewan, I was dazed when I got to Dory Lake. And uh, I feel this is Mexico in Abada. Lovely. Really? We have so much to see, um, so much to explore in the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo. In uh, around us here in uh, Fort McMurray, I'm sure you know about uh, the Mark Island, easily maybe one of the best in, uh, in Canada. We have a huge facility and uh, so much to see at, at the Mark Island, um, sporting arena, uh, little bit of little bits and pieces of things uh, that is only when you get there that you can believe we have and huge to know that we have that in Fort McMurray. We have the golf course, beautiful place. We have uh, Anza, in Anzac, we have uh, um, Greg, uh, uh, we have a lake, I think it's Gregor Lake. We have so many uh, different things that we start reach. We have different uh, places that people can uh, can see and I and currently the economic development is also doing more to attract tourism. I think it's a major deliverable in the next couple of years that they are working on uh, to ensure that people are well aware of what we have in the region and uh, attract people to come and see and, and spend some time. So yeah, so much you can do. Come come on down to Fort McMurray. So what do you do? Because you've already talked about how you go bowling with your friends and you go bowling <laughs> yes. with your family. But yes. where in the community can you just go and escape? Go and just recenter yourself because you know the day after, the next day, you're going to have mm -hmm. to get up and address the issues, address the concerns of your residents and be counselor again. Where do you go to just let it all go? <laughs> You're going to say your very... house, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I'm a little bit boring when it comes to times that I want to rest. I love my house. I stay in the lot and I just uh, relax and uh, get ready and go. Um, but other than that, I, um, I think more than anything, I enjoyed the company of other people. And uh, I go to church. I have lots of uh, uh, female uh, groups that we have uh, in the community that I belong to. And uh, so I just, I have so much going on for me. 
it's difficult to, but once in a while as well, I go with others to, to other places around the, the region just to get out of the city. But our city is not like uh, Calgary or Edmonton with lots of traffic. So it's very easy for us to travel uh, around and go to places and come back. So generally we, I do go out, um, um, but I'm an indoor person too sometimes. I, because I think I spend my energy and uh, sometimes I'm ready to just shut down and watch your duty and uh, relax and get ready for the following day. Uh, if if you can't watch Judge Judy on a random night and just relax and decompress that way, I don't know what can decompress you. But <laughs> I want to turn to my million dollar question now. And it's okay. the million dollar question because I think every municipal leader needs to be able to answer it correctly. But I believe every municipal leader knows how to answer it correctly. Okay. And I'll the try. question is, in your opinion, what makes the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo such a unique place to live? to work and to raise a family? Yeah, lovely question. For me, I came in here with two, I think one was a teenager and one was 12. So one of the things that makes this region the best place for me, and especially the city of Fort McMurray is the proximity of places to places. The ease of travel, one, and I, raised my kids uh, by myself, so that's uh, a gift to me. Um, uh, the economy, I don't know anywhere where 24, 25 year old kids, uh, okay, they are adults now, but they can literally start uh, thinking of buying their homes or have a good car, have a uh, good job. The opportunities are enormous in this region for those who are ready to work. So that's one of the things. And then for immigrants, I always advertise the region. <laughs> you want a place where you can start off and get steady, then come on down to the region, to Wood Buffalo. So it's an easy place to, and it's not even as expensive as people think. Some things are expensive, but our houses uh, renting is not as expensive as Toronto. But most people will earn much more than Toronto here. So sometimes I wonder why people won't want to live here. It's cold though, <laughs> especially yeah. for someone like me. But uh, I, I lived in Chicago for eight years. So I think that prepared me and then Toronto for two years. Um, so uh, for my kids, uh, they don't even know the difference, especially they came at a very uh, young age. So for them, it's normal life. So it's good, but I always tell my family back in Africa, I don't sleep outside. I don't shop outside. <laughs> it's freezing cold, but guess what? Everywhere is heated, right? Including the cars, the homes. Um, so uh, I think... Uh, for the economy, for ease of travel, and the fact that you can connect with people so easily. I, I think I can brag that uh, in, I've been here for 12 years, going on 13. Um, I think I've met a whole lot of people, if not everybody. And uh, <laughs> that has its own advantage too. So yeah, it's, uh, it's just an easy place to, to live. Once Monkey. you can wear your coat. I go the <laughs> yeah. uh, Funky, I want to thank you. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending time with me. Um, now, I have done over, so, well, as of this episode, this is my 650th interview with wow. people from across Canada. And I want to say I couldn't have asked for a better guest to enjoy my 650th episode with. So wow. thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule for sitting down and chatting. 
but thank you for serving your community. I don't think municipal leaders hear that enough, and I want to make sure that changes. So thank you for stepping up and making your community a better place. I can imagine the weight and responsibility that is on your shoulders. I wouldn't want it myself, but thank you. Thank you so much for doing what you do. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm pleased, and uh, like I always say, it's my honor to serve. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Your continued interest in delving deep into the issues that shape our communities across Canada is both inspiring and essential. Now, as we wrap up, it is my hope that you've gained valuable insights into the intricate world of municipal politics from our guest today. Now, if you found this dialogue as engaging as I did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button today. By subscribing, you're not just staying up to date on the latest conversations, but you're also playing a vital role in supporting our endeavor to bring you more meaningful content. Now, we couldn't embark on this journey without your support either. Creating content that sheds light on the issues affecting municipalities requires dedication and resources. Now, if you believe in our mission and want to help us to continue to grow, please consider visiting our support page conveniently linked in the show notes or by visiting crossborderinterviews.ca. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in ensuring that we can keep delivering you the kind of content you've come to expect from us. Now, once again, thank you for being part of this community. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues what truly matter to you and to our communities. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.